Hi, and uh, welcome to our Radio Free Decipher. Um, we got sort of a weird show going on today. I'm here by myself. Uh, usually I have Evan as the co-host, or Evan does it by, um, you know, by himself because he knows how to work all this fancy schmancy equipment. But uh, I don't. So with me today I have a guinea pig, uh, Mr. Justin Pakes. How are you doing today? I'm actually not here. You're actually not here. No, I'm not here. I'm actually now at the uh, Arizona EdgeCon DPC. That's right. Um, we're so recording you... this actually a day early since you are leaving the office here in just a little bit to fly out to Phoenix, Arizona. Participate in the. Uh, actually, you're not going to play in the DPC. I understand. It is a popular misconception, but um, rather than leave the uh, chance to beat me stupid up to <laughs> the uh, up to the pairing system, um, I'll actually be just hanging around during the day, getting an idea of what people are playing, and letting playing any pickup games that way. People can catch me, and uh, I should get more games in that way. And then uh, right after the DPC, which is on Friday today. Uh, the next day we have some Open Champion qualifiers, which are some of the last ones. This weekend hosts the last Open Championship qualifiers uh, on the planet for our games, uh, which are in France, the Millennium Opens, and in Phoenix, which is the EdgeCon Opens. So. Now I wonder why they wouldn't fly me out to the French one. <laughs> uh, Phoenix will have to do. So you're also going to be doing some other stuff there. You're going to be doing maybe some pickup games. I hear a seminar is in the plan. We um we were trying to set up for a little car design seminar. Um, they've had a little bit of problems out there getting the venue to provide necessary equipment. So it'll probably just be a and a while the people are doing a, um, their deck checks prior to the event sort of thing. So for that hour there, I'll just host a little bit of a QA and a and people can hit me with whatever they want, give me their opinion of whatever they want, and uh, generally probably give me serious abuse. Great. My suggestion to everybody out there, which is this is probably going to air when it's too late, but uh, my suggestion is to ask Justin about Seekers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's oh, fine. Oh, is that malicious? That no, Maybe no, a little malicious. No, Seekers is no problem. Even magnetic sausage tubes, serious therapy got me over that, so. I didn't understand a word you said, but you anyways. <laughs> you don't want the tube? T tube. Tube. Magnetic suction tube. Oh, that's right. That's <laughs> right. Um, well, great. Um, so everybody that has the opportunity, please uh, try and get out there and hang out with Justin this weekend. But you got some more information to us. Tell us a little bit about Reflections 3. I know there's been a lot of talk about Reflections 3 recently, and uh, you might have some stuff to show some people this weekend. I do indeed. Um, to actually give the... Um reason to beat me actually more than just wanting to beat me which is usually sufficient motivation <laughs> for most right, people that's right and it's got to be said not particularly hard we're, when trying, you, we're doing an experiment this weekend i believe right <laughs> when you um come and have your pickup game against a 1680 ranked player whatever i happen to be when i last played um if you do carry away with a victory which i expect to be just about everybody um there will be a little there's a little flyer sheet which has um information on reflections three including uh release month that sort of thing, as well as um, reveals three cards from the actual set. Now, the trick is that getting one of these won't really be enough because there is a number of different varieties of these, each revealing a different mix of cards. So all up, there's probably you know probably eight to twelve cards to be revealed out there this weekend if uh, I don't start winning games, God forbid. That's right. So there is the opportunity that there will be cards that you'll walk away with from this weekend that never got revealed. You will that ha you have the that people have the opportunity to get revealed, but if they don't beat you, they're not going to see them revealed. I could keep the cards all to myself. In the unlikely event of that, <laughs> <laughs> so basically, then what we've uh, what we've accomplished is um, collectible flyers. I think is what you <laughs> called them earlier. Yes, as far as because uh, we couldn't really get the sheets done in time for a bit of display of that, and uh, we don't actually have the product yet. It's still coming off the presses. Um, this is sort of the next best thing to give you a good idea of what some of the cards are, some of the functions. We haven't picked all the uh, all the big and juicy cards. We've just picked a selection to show you a little bit of what some of the themes are and some of the mixes. Good. Are we going to see the uh, the quote unquote sideboard things? They are to be revealed. Yes, you could uh -huh. if you pick the right flyers. You could actually see the uh, starting effects. You may even get to see the rumored defensive shield. Really? Hmm. And the uh, the cool color that they are because mm -hmm. it's a brand new card type, so it's got to have a brand new card mm -hmm. color, right? Brand new color. It, w it was a little hard to actually find that good color, but uh, really? we managed. We managed. Good. Uh, you know, when I see the color of those, it harkens me back to misprints from Premiere. <laughs> you know, there were some misprints in Premiere that turned out those colors. and so They were worth more, I believe, so maybe these will be worth more. Who knows? Any other uh, good info on Reflection 3 you can give us? Um, I probably can let you guys know that uh, at the moment we're looking at October release date. It'll okay. most likely be towards the middle to end of October. Okay. All things going well. That's unofficial at the moment, but that's about where we're aiming for. Um, the other thing that um, we managed to, I'm not too sure if this is well known out there yet, but maybe well known after the flyers, is we've actually, um, each pack contains one foil, 
mm-hmm. as well as three premium cards. So there is more on this than any previous Reflections product as wow, far as so premiums go. Yeah, that's great. You know, so basically there are 100 brand new cards in this set, so you have the opportunity to, I mean, in perfect collation, like three and a, and a quarter boxes or three and a third boxes will get you a complete set if you had perfect distribution. Well, 30, 30 packs and three, that's 90 cards right there. So yeah, exactly. That would get you there. And you'd have to get exactly perfect distribution. But it is a slightly larger set for a Reflections product, which is mm-hmm. normally in the, in the you know, 50, 60, 65 card range for mm-hmm. premiums, as Reflections 2 was. And um, it's also a mix of themes. So we want to make sure that you know, you're not pulling half the cards you need for the theme and not the cards you really need to activate right. the theme. Or you know, if you pull something you need and not the card that will let that go. So the idea is try and get the cards out there a little bit quicker and uh, people can then pull the theme together and be able to play it reasonably quickly. Sounds good. Well, good luck to you this weekend, Justin, and uh, you know, here's hoping that you lose a lot of games so everybody can see all the cards. Oh, I don't think that'll be too much of a problem. You know, this is funny because uh, you're actually rooting to lose. I mean, you're not going to lose on purpose, but you're kind of like, you know, I want people to see these cards. So it's like, you know, good, you beat me, man. You know, good on you. Get a beauty sport. <laughs> uh, are you crazy? I want to win. All right. Having said that, I'm fully prepared to spend three days of embarrassment. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks a lot, and uh, we're looking forward to uh, Reflections 3, and uh, I'm sure everybody out there are going to be looking forward to the spoilers that are going to get out there on the bulletin boards and the discussion list soon after this weekend. So. The fact that people can take home a color flyer means uh, they should make it up to the, uh, to the various uh, public forums pretty quickly because you can just sit there and type them out when you want to. You could be the first. You know which uh, m- my favorite card is from the from the ones that you're going to spoil? Go on, tell me. It's uh, Orsing's Rifleman. Uh, you're that a big thing, fan of that? That thing's brutal. I read it this morning. I went, what on earth is Justin thinking? Uh, quite frankly, I was, I was probably drunk at the time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Well, have a safe trip, and uh, good luck this weekend. It should be good. Looking forward to catch up with everyone. All right. Uh, now we got, uh, we're going to have Mike Reynolds on the show here, and we're going to be talking about uh, his involvement with Lord of the Rings. Mike Reynolds, how you doing? Welcome to the show. Thanks, I'm doing great, Joe. All right, so um, Mike, we got you on to talk about Lord of the Rings today. Um, as for those of you that don't know, today, or I'm sorry, yesterday, the sixth was exactly two months until the release of the uh, Lord of the Rings trading card game. So right. we are under two months now. How's the? Uh, you got some pressure on you guys? Actually, I think the bulk of the pressure is just has passed us this past week. So yeah. we're we're seeing the end of the tunnel here, and, and we all feel really good about the way the game has developed. Yeah, we've been getting fantastic reviews. I've been out on the road and teaching different distributors or right. press and media or retailers how to play the game, and, and we've been getting really, really good reviews on the OneRing.net and in uh, the newest um, InQuest. Uh, I know that you guys taught the InQuest staff. And yeah and various other publications that uh, you'll be seeing soon. Everybody's really, really been enjoying the game and said it's, you know, the game is actually, you know, really top-notch. So speaks volumes, and congratulations, Mike. Well, well the congratulations uh, has, has yet to be uh, proven, I guess. But uh, honestly, we do feel really good about it. Um, I, I feel good about it. Um, so, you know, that's, that's the best we can do, you know, right now. Great. Well, now take us back. Um, okay. flashback, if you will, to um, how basically you got into the whole gaming scene. And, you know, it's been quite a long road for you and, and uh, to where you are now. And uh, take us through those steps. Well, I was a graduate student at the University of Virginia in uh, Charlottesville, Virginia. And my wife's boss was a gamer, a board gamer, a classic historical board gamer. Mm-hmm. And uh, he was in a little club. And I had never gamed except for Dungeons & Dragons. I had read Lord of the Rings and was a big fan already. But he invited me to his club, and I discovered the wonderful world of hobby gaming at that point. This was about 10 years ago. Okay. And um, from that point on, I was just hooked on games. I immediately started designing games after just, like, playing for a couple of weeks. And um, there's a company in Charlottesville, Virginia, called Iron Crown Enterprises, which I got hooked up with about a year later. Mm-hmm. And uh, about a year after that, I started uh, design work on the Middle Earth collectible card game. I was co-designer of that with uh, my mentor, Coleman Charlton, and uh, the rest is just kind of pretty straightforward from there. You know, worked on the Middle Earth collectible card game for for three years, three and a half years. I actually saw your, I was looking through old scries recently, Mike, I don't know if you're aware of this, and uh, I actually saw your picture in there uh, handing the the trophy to the world champion or something like that. Oh, yeah, that that one wasn't so bad. Scry did have a a standard picture they would use for articles I would write, which was horrible. Really? Yeah, I can uh, can, uh, (laughs) empathize. But the trophy one was fine. Yeah, (laughs) good, good. 
Um, so you've been a big fan of Tolkien even before um, you joined up with Iron Crown and before you joined up with us. And uh, Absolutely. Now, after you left Iron Crown, you came to work for us to work on our Star Wars card game. That's right. I worked. Uh, I was a co-designer of Death Star 2 and uh, a couple other expansions with Tom Lischke and uh, Chuck Kalbach. And um, and and I did some work on YJ, you know, a little work on uh, Austin Powers, mm -hmm. and um, then you left us. Yeah, I, <laughs> for some reason I wanted to live with my wife in Charlottesville instead of commuting between Norfolk and Charlottesville. How, how far away is that? It's about three hours one way. So every weekend I'm driving back and forth between Norfolk and Charlottesville, uh -huh. Virginia. Um, I was a computer programmer. However, uh, I was. You know, living in Charlottesville was a program for about nine months. However, uh, the opportunity to work on the Lord of the Rings trading card game mm -hmm. um, pulls you back. Yeah, yeah. It just it just they keep pulling me back in. <laughs> a little uh, Al Pacino there. But. How how young were you when you read uh, the Tolkien books? Thirteen. Really, that young? Yeah. That's a that's a pretty steep read for somebody of that age. Yeah, it was it was a challenge. It was uh, when I actually realized they existed. You know, it was like just in the forefront of my goals, my immediate goals. Mm -hmm. Oh wow, I've got to read this excellent trilogy. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, so I was just focused on it for a summer and plowed right. through it. Yeah. And you probably, out of all of the uh, guys in the TCG studio that we have here, you're probably one of the most knowledgeable about the Tolkien works because of your work with Iron Crown and uh, the extensive background that you have in, in your specific area of gaming. Uh, that's an interesting point. I have been a, around Tolkien scholars for many years, um, people who have read the books, you know, 15 plus times, people who have read The Unfinished Tales many times, who have read essays and written essays and articles and stuff. I've been around these people and worked with them at Iron Crown Enterprises on a daily basis mm -hmm. for several years. I myself have not personally done uh, research on that level. Mm -hmm. However, I have picked up so much from these other people. Absolutely. Uh, it's sort of like, you know, uh, learning by osmosis. Just exactly. being around these people, mm -hmm. just, you know, uh, even designing the cards, you have to be familiar with the different aspects. Because, uh, it, for example, in the old Iron Crown game, they made a card for, you know, whatever, whatever. Then you suddenly know, as far as a gamer, you know what the card does in the game, which brings you familiarity with what exactly. maybe the, the item does Very well put. within the books. Mm -hmm. that's, so, that's exactly right. I, I know that that's that mm -hmm. way for a lot of people that play our Star Wars or our Star Trek game, just because they're familiar with the cards brings them to that upper echelon of mm -hmm. intelligence within that specific property. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a passive process. Mm -hmm. yeah, it does. Now, other designers, actually, Tom and Chuck, probably have read the complete novels more recently than I have, and they probably can recall more facts of a certain nature than I could. Okay. Uh, so, so Chuck and Tom are uh, also lend a, certainly a, a, a strong level of expertise mm -hmm. to our design process. Mm -hmm. you know. Okay. What else, uh, what are your design goals? Uh, as far as the card game, the Lord of the Rings card game is concerned. Well, it's that's a there's like a multi-tiered uh, set of goals. Mm -hmm. um, we want the game to be true to the property, true to the novels, true to the movie. Mm -hmm. You know, there is such a thing as a distinct Tolkien feel. Sure. And we certainly want to achieve that. We want the game to be accessible to everyone who enjoys the movie. We want them to enjoy the card game. Okay. We want it to be accessible on that level. We want the game to have enough. We want the game to have mental depth to keep people making new decks for years and years, to make, keep people intrigued with new cards and wanting to make new decks for years and years. That's very important, too. Absolutely. And we want the game to be beautiful, which isn't directly what I do. Uh, that's what the art department does, but the art department has achieved that. I believe so. For sure. I was down there looking at the cards again today, and, jeez, they are so good looking. Right. Good looking cards. So, well, all right, Mike. Any other last parting thoughts that you want to convey to our listeners out there? I'm just, I'm just uh, hoping Decipher lets me play in the uh, in the uh, sanctioned tournament system because I just <laughs> think I really, enjoy, I would really enjoy that. But I'm not sure Decipher will. <laughs> no, it's all good, man. It's all good. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks a lot for joining the show today, Mike. And uh, We'll let you get back up there. It sounds like you guys are over the hump, and you guys yeah. are uh, sliding down the slide as we as we speak, ready mm -hmm. to hit the sandbox. So um, 
have fun back upstairs and okay. uh, keep bringing out those great products. And thanks so much. All right, we'll put out the good word, Kyle. I will, man. I will. All right, thanks everyone for listening this week, and uh, we should be back with Mr. Evan Lawrence next week. And uh, so I, I don't have to go through and uh, monkey with all this electronic equipment. So <laughs> thanks for bearing with me, everybody. Have a great weekend. <laughs>